Oh, it was all boarded up 10 years ago. Growing up here, it used to be just blank walls. Now it's full of colour. Just today, there was a guy came up and he, he pointed to the picture and he said, I used to work there. Luca, did you just tell me that this is your first ever interview? First ever. <laughs> I'm back here in New Brighton, standing in the windiest possible place to do an introduction to see how art, culture and a wee splash of paint is re-energising this once thriving Merseyside seaside town. So join me as I track down some of the artists brightening up the landscape and catch up with Rock Point Leisure's Daniel Davies to see how things have progressed since I visited last in 2019. My name's Doug, you're watching Fifth Wall TV. <laughs> Hi, my name's Dan Davis and I'm the Chief Exec of Rock Point Leisure. The Rock Point Leisure is a company I set up in 2018 with the sort of main idea and agenda of regenerating the town that I grew up in, New Brighton. It's obviously been a weird couple of years for the whole country and world because we've been in and out of lockdowns. Now we're, we're sort of back on track to you know, carry on what we're doing, uh, which is repurposing the sort of high street, uh, opening businesses for the closed, bringing buildings back to life. A large part of that is through street art and, uh, and art in general and music. At the heart of Rock Point's vision lies an extensive mural and street art program, which is bringing in artists at a local and national level to leave their mark here in the town. Just like this new piece by Adele Reynolds. I've heard a rumor that there might even be some artists out in the street painting today. Let's go see if we can find them. My name is Brezzo, I'm from New Brighton. I'm from Wallasey, not New Brighton. I'm painting a portrait of the Mysterians. Uh, they are a local band. A couple of them used to wear in Rock Point Records there. I'm standing here with Joe Forrest, who's currently painting the old New Brighton Tower. The old New Brighton Tower doesn't exist anymore, so it's kind of going into the heritage of the local area. It's done in an old postcard style, and just around the corner I did a series of other old new Brighton postcards. What are some of the things that they're saying to you? Well, it's just like when I was doing the, the donkeys, a woman came up and said, I remember that donkey. Sort of learning on the job. I've never really had a public role to do before. I've done one, a couple of venues and then mainly just my own work in, in like mates' back gardens and things like that. Yeah, this is the first experience doing something that other people can see. Right now, how does it feel to be painting in the public in your hometown? Good, it feels great because I know everyone. Everyone keeps coming up and asking how it's going and stuff like that. So it's You've got a hometown advantage yeah, then. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's just basically hanging out with my mates and doing a bit of painting. Looking at seaside, other seaside towns and other regenerations and things, I thought art was a, a crucial part in regenerating somewhere like New Brighton. There's a lot of rich history of art, music, culture, and I think in any regeneration, that is important to, you know, it's important to, to factor in, in on a big scale. To have things that often are kept away from smaller communities. About 45% of the properties, commercial properties on this high street were boarded up. Add in things like 60% of the street lights being out. All of that attracts antisocial behaviour fly tipping. It doesn't take long before an area starts to spiral downwards. Oh, it was all boarded up 10 years ago. Growing up here, it used to be just blank walls, so now it's full of colour. It's getting a lot more footfall. It, the place used to be desolate, and then now it's teeming with people, you know, especially over the weekend. It's all positive. New Brighton is it is unique in some respects that it's it's got a rich history as a seaside town. But a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, you know, not necessarily unique to New Brighton. The base model could be used in a lot of places of similar size. It does require a public-private partnership sort of approach. And it does require some people from the area, because when I grew up around here, if you managed to get out, you never ever came back to the place. That isn't good for the sort of long-term, you know, future of any place. You want to retain talent and attract talent. 
in order to do that, you've got to have a bit of an ecosystem where people want to live. You know, it's not just about hospitality, it's about a whole host of different potential businesses and sectors. You've got to have space for people to start businesses and that if you can have like a clustering effect of independent businesses and independence is a key word here what that's really created is a bit of a buzz around the place where you're getting people say actually i want to open a business here i want to i want to work here i want to live here to have a vibrant sort of community you've got to have something for people of all ages and you've got to have opportunities three years ago i was just sat at home painting just using brushes and then now I'm using spray cans. I didn't even think I'd be three floors up using spray paint. They said that to me a few years ago, I'd have laughed at you. I'd seen all this stuff go up in the past few years and, and sort of wanted to give it a go myself and then getting into spray paint and figuring that stuff out a little bit just means I can got the opportunity to do some stuff on in the public. That's it for my time here in New Brighton once again. First and foremost yeah, I would like I, to say I really like it up here. The last couple of years have pushed us all to think in new ways. I think Dan was right on the money when he was talking about the state of the homogenized British high street. These carbon copy models have sucked the life and individuality out of towns nationwide. And you can tell by the number of boarded up shop fronts around the country that now more than ever, we need to think differently. We need to approach this in a new way and demand better. And maybe, just maybe, this is exactly the model that we should be looking towards. I have a feeling this isn't going to be my last time here in New Brighton. So for now, I'd just like to say thank you to Dan and the Rock Point team once again for their support and their hospitality. I look forward to coming back soon. Till then, my name's Doug, and this is Football TV.